I think the biggest challenges uh, around uh, commercial lighting just at the moment are the disruptive technology of LEDs. I think there are, there are problems with initial cost and, and affordability um, to, to be sure that we get the real benefits that, that we need. And of course, um, there are other challenges around uh, energy efficiency. Well, we are in this paradigm shift where we are moving from fluorescent to LEDs. And just three months ago, the lines crossed for the first time where you actually said that LEDs are now more efficient than fluorescent tubes. And that sort of made the, uh, the real kickoff because we've been talking about first movers who move into this on a very early stage, but now it's like case is closed. It's evident that now LEDs are more efficient than fluorescent. So the trend is really starting now. Cost is probably the number one factor at the moment, but I think the uh, attitude is changing and we are now looking at uh, life cycle costs, um, which is a bit more of a challenge when we have two separate parties involved. We have the development team and then the operational team, so we have a capital budget and a revenue budget. We're still in a recession, uh, so from our perspective, um, you know, we're still looking to uh, provide the most cost-effective schemes. I think some of the, the things we're seeing at the moment, particularly with LEDs, uh, and, and the, the, there has seemed to be a big push to, to adopt those at all costs, is they still uh, cost a lot of money with a, with a long uh, payback period, which is sometimes difficult to justify uh, in a business case. Cost is always an issue because LED fixtures are, are more expensive. Even if the chips get cheaper, you need to build long-lasting fixtures. The gaskets, the wiring, the ballast, all the stuff inside the fixtures needs to last for just as long as the LED. So it's, um, it'll probably never be as cheap as, um, as fluorescent used to be. But it's, um, it's people who have a green profile, who don't want any mercury in their buildings, who have an environmental view on faces that chooses these kind of fixtures. Uh, letting agents say, oh, it's an LED scheme, oh, great, good, it's got anything like it, tick. I think the BRIAM performance certificate has certainly helped the, uh, the market at the moment because it's brought it much, much further up the agenda to the efficiency of the, the fixture and that has got to be good for everybody. Saving energy is something that we here at Fagerholt are passionate about and, and BRIAM helps us to raise that issue. BRIAM has been very successful in uh, bringing those issues onto the agenda um, and I think it's been very successful in the fact that it manages not only energy but also uh, management and quality. Unfortunately it is by its nature a tick box type of system and suffers from all the limitations that that system has. Certainly with BRIAM there's, uh, there's a lot more work that needs to be done to, to, to bring it up to date as far as lighting is concerned. Um, I think it needs a complete revamp and it needs the lighting industry to help BRE to do that. They can be limited in some ways in that they can become a bit of a tick box exercise where you're just looking to achieve certain targets in the design um, at, and from day one and then they tend to get left, uh, by, left behind after that. Um, there's not enough sort of feedback going, going back and looking at how the, the building's actually performing. Um, but I've, I certainly see them adding value to the, to the process. I think on day one, the energy efficiency, uh, you know, we've got our targets to hit. But at the end of the day, once that building's up and running, it, it could be, you know, who knows what's going to be happening. I mean, we need to design the scheme so they're as efficient as possible. So when they are up and running, then it's, it's as close to that, that, that sort of initial calculations and, and testing to start with. But, uh, you know, it, it's a difficult one. There maybe needs to be a, a further series of tests, you know, a year or two down the line, for example, to really see what the building's doing over that period of time. I think there's a lot of evidence to show there are big uh, performance gaps between uh, EPCs and then when you measure the actual operation. Um, there's a number of reasons for that. Um, uh, probably one of the main ones is the uh, lack of uh, training uh, of the systems when it's handed over, the lack of commissioning um, and really making the operational staff understand how to operate a building. You can do a certificate at the beginning of the, of, of the project of, of the, the intention of what it's going to be but then uh, for whatever reason it's not commissioned properly, it's not handed over properly or it's, it's run differently, the FM team have a different perception 
So you find that once you get into occupation, what you're actually doing is, and what you, against what you thought you were doing is, is can be different, yeah. We need to think about the, the bigger process, really, of um, you know, how, the, how the environment works for the, the, use, the end users um, and the, the whole the life cycle cost of the, of the lighting installation. We need to focus on lighting for people. Um, and there are a lot of things that are helping us in doing that now. A lot of the regulatory changes that have been made recently are pushing us in that direction. The BCO guide that's just about to be launched is a big step and help communicate that message both to technical and non-technical people. And I think the lighting community need to concentrate on talking outside of their own narrow community to try and tell the story of what the contribution that lighting can make.